On October 13th, 1923, our beloved Nebraska Cornhuskers played the first game ever in Memorial Stadium. It was against the Oklahoma Sooners. It was the fifth game in the Nebraska-Oklahoma series, and the Sooners had yet to win a game against Nebraska. The series between the two schools had started in 1912. The first game was played in Lincoln and resulted in a 13-9 Nebraska win. In 1919, the teams played to a 7-7 tie in Omaha. The next two games, in 1921 and 1922, resulted in very lopsided Nebraska wins. In 1921, Nebraska won in Lincoln 44-0, and in 1922, Nebraska won in Norman, Oklahoma, 39-7. I'm John Johnston with Corn Nation. This is a history video about the first ever game played in Memorial Stadium, Nebraska's Memorial Stadium. Please share this video with your friends. Thank you. Oklahoma and Nebraska were members of the Missouri Valley Conference. The Missouri Valley Conference was founded in 1907, and Nebraska was one of the charter schools along with Kansas, Missouri, and Washington University in St. Louis. Oklahoma joined the Missouri Valley Conference in 1920, and both teams, both schools, would go on to help start the Big Six Conference, the forerunner of the Big Eight, in 1928. By 1923, Nebraska had worked themselves into national prominence. Nebraska's early rivalry with Minnesota and games with Notre Dame had put them on the map. In fact, the first game of the 1923 season was a 24-7 loss to Illinois, who at the time was coached by a man named Robert Zubke and featured a young man by the name of Red Grange who would go on to win nationwide fame and historical acclaim for his exploits on the football field. Nebraska was coached by Fred Dawson. Dawson coached at Nebraska from 1921 to 1924, and his first three teams won the Missouri Valley Conference title, although in 1923 he tied with Kansas. In 1924, Dawson's final season before leaving for the Denver Pioneers, Nebraska finished second in the Missouri Valley Conference. Dawson's record at Nebraska would conclude with 23 wins, 7 losses, and 2 ties. His conference record was 14 wins, one loss, and two ties. Oklahoma was coached by Benny Owen. Owen began coaching at Oklahoma in 1905. And at the fact throughout his time at Oklahoma, he was the athletic director, the football coach, the basketball coach, and the baseball coach. By the time he finished coaching football for the Sooners in 1926, he had amassed 122 wins, 54 losses, and 16 ties. Oklahoma's playing field is named Owen Field after him, much like our own Tom Osborne Field in Memorial Stadium. Owen was a charter member of the College Football Hall of Fame when it was started in 1951. Back to 1923, there was a concern that Memorial Stadium wouldn't be ready for the game, and in fact, it wasn't finished by the time the two teams played. The field was dirt, as grass had yet to be installed, and while I couldn't confirm it, it sounds like some of the stands or concourses were not yet completed. Nebraska chose to wear blue uniforms. They did this out of courtesy to the visiting Sooners, as the two teams normally both wore red. I found a newspaper account from the State Journal on October 12, 1923, where the columnist related how two Nebraska fans had gotten confused during the 1921 game because they thought Nebraska was being destroyed by Oklahoma and left at half. Remember that Nebraska won that game 44 to nothing. They were watching the wrong red team. So to avoid confusion for the 1923 game, Nebraska chose to war blue. Now, there's very few pictures from this game, but I found three of them, all from the Omaha World Herald. But you can see the stripes on the uniforms, which would be really bizarre today, were worn by Oklahoma. And you can kind of see the concourse or the stands in the background on one of the pictures. And I realize they're not the best, but these are from 1923 and they are from scanned newspapers. No one knew what to expect from the game. It was Oklahoma's first game of the season, 
But as I mentioned earlier, Nebraska had already played Illinois and lost 24 to 7. The loss was of little concern to Nebraska. And in fact, the two coaches, Zubke and Dawson, considered exchanging playbooks before the game. The purpose of the Nebraska-Illinois game earlier in the season was to prepare both teams for their conference games. Now keep in mind, in 1923, there was no way to determine a national title. There was no national champion. The AP poll didn't come into being until 1936. Being a conference champion was a huge deal. Nebraska was out to win a Missouri Valley Conference title, while Illinois wanted to win the Big Ten. Nebraska captain Vern Llewellyn was out for the Oklahoma game with an infected knee. Well, it doesn't sound like much to us. Infections were very serious problems at the time, as penicillin wouldn't be discovered until 1928. Infections regularly started out as an abrasion or a small cut, and could spread to kill a person in the 1923 era. Nebraska's team had a size advantage. Oklahoma had an advantage with their aerial attack, which was how passing was referred to at the time. Game day saw 15,000 fans in attendance, breaking opening day records. It was a tough first half. Nebraska scored the only points when Herb DeWitt's Place kicked a field goal in the second quarter to give our beloved Huskers a 3-0 halftime lead. The Oklahoma aerial attack was largely stymied because Nebraska had the ball for most of the first half. In the second half, halfback Dave Noble scored the first touchdown in Memorial Stadium on a four-yard run in the third quarter to put Nebraska up 10-0. Just as it looked like Oklahoma might make a game of it, Sooner halfback and captain Pete Hammert fumbled close to the Nebraska goal line. Nebraska in Doug Myers did a 93-yard scoop and score, a phrase that was nowhere near to being used at the time, to make the game 17 to nothing. It was Myers' first start with a varsity. A very nice debut. Noble scored one more time to bring it to the 24 to nothing margin. Nebraska finished the game with 350 yards rushing and zero passing. Our Huskers were 0 for 10 passing, compared to Oklahoma's 8 for 20 for 100 yards. The Sooners were held to 41 rushing yards. And as we know, Nebraska and Oklahoma would go on to play each other for 71 years straight and become storied rivals. Those games and those stories are for another day. Memorial Stadium was dedicated the following week when our beloved Huskers played Kansas. That game ended in a 0-0 tie but was seen by 20,000 people. For 100 years, Nebraska's Memorial Stadium has been the state's biggest and most well-known cathedral. Nebraska football has an incredibly rich history, even a lot be- that occurred before the arrival of the Bob father, Bob Devaney, in 1962, which is where most Nebraska fans think the history started. I plan on doing more college football history videos, both here for Nebraska and and on my national history channel named Hardcore College Football History for National College Football Stories. I'm John Johnston, founder of Corn Nation. I hope you enjoy these history videos. Please share with your friends, neighbors, and other college football friends, wherever they may be. Thank you for your support. Go Big Red.